just got off the phone with Schneider Electric. They make the, um, the Square D Arcfall AC breakers that I'm using. And I also just got off the phone with Outback Power Systems technical support. Um, so I'm following up on uh, when I fried my uh, Outback inverter last year, which was a huge, huge uh, issue because it's like a $1,500 or $2,000 inverter. Um, and I gotta first say that Outback Power Systems, every time I call their technical support, they're fantastic. They replaced my inverter. I didn't even buy it new. I bought it from a friend used, and I shorted it out, and they still replaced it. So I am sold on Outback forever, um, and I hope you all are as well. I mean, take my word for it. Awesome company. Um, so last year, when I was screwing a screw into the wall, trying to secure some stucco netting for plaster, I believe, I hit a piece of Romex, I fused the positive and the ground, creating a ground fault, which fried my inverter. Um, all I had protecting my inverter was a 20 amp square D arc fault breaker, branch circuit breaker, in my breaker box. And then there was a 100 amp main on that box, and then there was my inverter connected to that. And I was confu very confused as to why that 20 amp breaker didn't trip. Um, so. I have now gotten some clarification on that and I wanted to share it with you. Um, so, I'm gonna say in here. Okay. So, my AC, almost all AC breakers um, are made in a way where they allow a short period of over, overcurrent. So, at 120 volts, um, a 20 amp breaker will actually allow, at least the square D breakers that I have, They'll allow three times that amperage, up to 60 amps, for anywhere between three and 10 seconds before they trip. Um, that's if you have a table saw or you know a machine that has a large startup cost. It allows an overcurrent for a few seconds till it gets started up, and then you know that a table saw that might use 25 amps to get started after a couple seconds, it might only use 10 or 15 amps to run, and that's fine for the breaker. Um, the reason those breakers can, can allow that is because their main purpose is to prevent overheating in the cabling in your walls, which can lead to a fire. So just a couple seconds, a few seconds of overcurrent, heat up the wire a little bit, but not enough to start a fire. So that's why they allow that. Um, and that is why my breaker, my 20 amp breaker, did not trip when I had that short. If that, if that sustained energy um, had been going through for 10 seconds, maybe it would have eventually tripped, but that's why it didn't trip, because it has that allowance for overcurrent. Unfortunately, my FX series, uh, I think I had a 2524 um, Outback Inverter, uh, has a, a rating of 60 amps on the line side. And when I sent back more than 60 amps to the, uh, to the inverter, it fried it. Um, also something about the most common AC breakers is, uh, at least with uh, Square D, they have immediate disconnect at six times the amperage. So at 120 amps at 100, uh, sorry, 120 amps at 120 volts, give or take, AC, they will immediately trip. So my short must have been less than 120 amps at 120 volts, but it was obviously more than 60 amps at 120 volts because it fried my inverter. Uh, so. It's been almost a year, and now I finally have clarification on this. Um, it's been troubling me a lot, um, wondering if I did the right thing. Because what I immediately did after I got the new inverter was install a 30 amp uh, disconnect, a breaker, an AC breaker, between the main of my breaker box and the inverter, uh, thinking that would, would, would help the situation. Now from what I've learned, I just used the wrong breaker. You need a 100% duty cycle breaker to do this. Now, Outback Power System AC breakers are 100% duty cycle breakers. They will trip immediately with no overcurrent allowance. That would have saved my inverter last year. Uh, another thing that could have saved it was a, uh, a fast-acting fuse, if I had that up there. Um, either one will work. Um, the technical support rep I spoke to at Outback just now said if you like, you really want to get crazy and you you know you really want to protect because you know over overcurrent and surges are unpredictable he said put a surge protector on your uh between your inverter and your uh and your breaker box uh such as like a midnight solar uh uh surge protector 
So he suggested even doing all three if I could afford it and I wanted to spend the time. A surge protector, uh, a fast acting fuse, and one of their 100% Dewey cycle uh, breakers. Um, I'll probably go for a 30 amp one because you know I'll never even get up to 30 amps. Maybe if I had a bunch of stuff one day, but probably not. And uh, and that's still half of what the inverter can can handle. Um, I actually do have a midnight solar lightning arrestor, which is what he recommended. It's a surge protector on my DC side between my panels and my batteries and my charge controller to protect against lightning. Uh, but I did not have a surge protector to protect my inverter against my branch circuits. So, uh, you know, I feel it, I just feel it's really important to, you know, I'm showing, I'm trying to show everyone how I'm building my Earthship and I want to be very open and transparent about the mistakes I'm making and how I'm fixing them. Um, so hopefully, you know, you guys don't make the same when you're building yours. I'm using a Brad nailer. Um, 16 gauge brads, uh, one and a half and two inches long. When I'm securing these pieces of trim, and I got electrical running through here.